All right. This is not like the other minor reviews. Look at this thing. It is a unique color. It's laser etched and it's an absolute passive income machine. So let me tell you a little bit about the specs on this device. It's an ASIC miner, an application specific integrated circuit miner. It comes in a box with foam, but of course you probably knew that. It sports four hash boards, which is like if you were a car, you had four engines, or maybe it's more like four cylinder. Furthermore, how much juice does it use? Really, not that much. It's only consuming 2,300 watts of electricity, or that's what it's supposed to do. We'll put it to the test here shortly. It does require 200 voltage plus. So what is typical of all miners with an attached power supply. Like most miners, you need to have an ethernet cable to give it internet access. It has a power input of a C19. So you need a C19 and C20 power cable in order to power one of these devices. It has two high powered fans. And let me tell you, high is very, very serious. Look how thick these are. These are thicker than normal fans. A typical Bitmain amp miner, S19, or what looks much like the S21 as well, is right next to this mining rig. Oh, which by the way, is called the Bombax Miner EZ100. So let's go ahead and click it on. What we have here is a broken circuit. Ooh. I thought you'd say that. Let me tell you, it is impressive how much air this is moving. By the way, we even got warranty. While that thing boots up, let me show you this laser etched logo in the gray paint with a gradient right there. Interesting green blink here on the power supply. And now we've got a steady blink. I would love a LED on my power supplies that told me if they were good or bad. Ashboard's back to lighten up. Very interesting. At a glance, I'm super intrigued. This miner is an absolute cash cow. It is a new manufacturer. Uh, they boast, because uh, I've directly communicated with them, and that's how I was able to source this from them for this review here on the Boscoin YouTube channel, which by the way, sup, I'm Bosk. I try to bring you the latest and greatest crypto videos, especially mining videos. Uh, my goal here on the channel is basically to learn more, earn more, and deploying capital, right? Getting my capital deployed on things like miners and many other things in cryptocurrency to, to get my money working for me. Because if you just sit here doing nothing, you're gonna lose the inflation, you're gonna lose the inflation bad. My initial impressions are this, this thing is so cool, and you may think I'm overreacting, but please understand that I have reviewed literally several hundred silver boxes that look the same that are all different minor models just the simple fact that this was gray i was excited then the laser etching i was like well that's cool then you add a little bit of leds and freaking straight fanboying but more importantly right how much does it earn how much does it burn how much does it cost those are the key numbers those are the metrics we need so i'm going to get logged in get this set up to my mining pool i'm going to gather some real world mining data and real world mining profitability and then we're going to jump behind the screen and we're going to break all this data down uh, also get some power readings at the wall once this is stabilized mining for a while and then also see uh, what the noise of this is like. We heard what it sounded like at startup which should be a test of full uh, fan speed and then we, we hear it now. Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually mining yet. Uh, it is 86 degrees in here and stagnant. We're in the dirty south. It's hot. And by the way, this is cool. <laughs> I'm nothing short of impressed with this mining rig. Impressive. This is remoting into the farm, remoting into the mining rig. When it comes to setting up mining rigs, you put power cables in, you put an ethernet connection in, so it has a internet connection, and then uh, you just log into it and pretty much copy and paste your account or wallet address, and then you mine and, and get paid. 
I just log into my router app, I get the IP address, I name the device on my network, easy, right? So I've got 192.168.7.181. And username, password is just gonna be admin, admin. If this crash course doesn't make you feel comfortable enough to set up a mining rig, please watch our one hour video guide where I go over everything that you could possibly need to know for setting up ASIC miners, the electricity, the internet, and uh, just a bunch of tips and tricks I've learned along the way. I tested it with the auto IP suffix and I'll show you on the mining pool. I don't really like that, uh, but it's an interesting and cool feature to have. I, I love to have features and whether I wanna use them or not, uh, you know, it's gonna be up to me. So I'm just using F2 pool here. Uh, I've heard that you can get better results on other mining pools for ETC and Zill mining. I've mined on other mining pools before, but for the purpose of this test, I just threw it on here. Uh, so mining pool information, username, dot worker name passwords don't matter in this era update and then your information is input as far as what else you can do in here is not much which is expected and fine the little up arrow is going to be the upgrade setting if you ever want to change uh the firmware upgrade the firmware you can reset it which would be a factory reset here from the dashboard and then that icon would be to just remotely reboot your miner so i like the waves uh that's going to be our status information uh, so we can see our uptime, our hash rate, we see the fan speed, the temperature of the chips, the board hash rate, and the uh, assumed power consumption reported here from the dashboard. I see a reported hash rate that exceeds what the manufacturer says it does pretty significantly. It's more than 1000 mega hash better than it's supposed to be reportedly so we'll look at the mining pool data which is what we get paid off of that's what really matters and, and verifies this but the point is that's great miners oftentimes are in this era are over reported and they barely meet their specs or even underperform but another thousand mega hash a second compared to some other devices that's like another free mining rig on top so setup super easy you, you pick the cog icon and then you pick your coin type uh, so by default, it's set to mine ETC and ZIL. You can choose the Ethereum Classic mining algorithm, dual mining ETC and ZIL, as well as ETH for the, the classic ETH hash mining algorithm or ETH and ZIL. Great flexibility there right out of the box. Haven't updated or touched a thing with the, the mining software. One of the reasons this miner is so powerful, and we talked about it earlier, I showed you earlier, but it's the fact that it's a big boy, it has four hash boards inside and not just three, which is going to be the industry standard. When we click over to the actual mining pool, we can see that we are reportedly doing about 13 giga hash a second. So we have some stale shares, we have some rejected shares, and the miner reports some of that here as well. Uh, so some of this could be solved by maybe a different mining pool, but all we have is this data currently. So still, we are performing 500 mega hash a second or 0.5 giga hash a second above what the manufacturer says we're going to do. Great boost. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it. I'm here for it. How much are we mining and what's going on with the mining data? So you can see a few days ago, the miner went online. Then we got a full day of hashing and it averaged a hash rate on the mining pool of over 13,000 mega hash a second or 13 giga hash a second. Very good performance there. I had an internet issue and then the miner was down for half the day approximately uh, the following day. The reported performance was a little bit lower the day after that as well. I believe that the mining downtime bled into that next day as well. That translates into about 1.15 Ethereum Classic mine per day, which is about $32 worth of coin uh, with current prices at 28 bucks a coin. We are also dual mining Zillica. We mined 254 Zill which is about $5.76. So this is what I think is so cool and crazy about this mining rig. Basically with the dual mining aspect, I am pretty much, at least for my electricity rate and the lower power consumption for this device, covering my electricity bill just with the Zillica I'm mining. It, it's a good, just easy visual example, right? I could just sell all the Zill and then I'm pocketing the straight coin. Of course, you could do that with the Ethereum Classic as well. But the point is just that it's a very good visual that I'm mining this and that cumulatively right it's about six bucks and about 32 so i'm pulling about 38 dollars so even if your electricity rate was a little bit higher most people would be pulling about 30 bucks a day in passive income 
with this mining rig. But one of the elephants in the room, and there's a good little snapshot of what's going on with here thanks to Rabid Mining. I'll link his video out down below. But the key takeaway is that Zilliqa is transitioning to their 2.0 consensus mechanism. They're looking to move to proof of stake and ditch proof of work, basically ditch miners. Uh, but they're dangling a classic carrot and saying that there will be some opportunities for miners to be involved. Zilliqa is focused on staking. It's focused on reducing inflation. Uh, it basically is trying to follow the path, if you will, of Ethereum. Ethereum moved to proof of stake, no longer mineable. They've changed the way that some of the miner rewards have paid out already. Reportedly from them, analyzing the effects of desharding on mining profitability that concluded over time, rewards remained approximately unchanged for miners assuming their performance in supplying signatures does not change. That means on average, miners are earning roughly the same rewards as they did before this network upgrade. They are about to launch Zill version V.9.3.4, uh, and that doesn't really matter because at Zillica 2, when they moved to Zillica 2, much like ETH 2.0, right? When they moved to that, that's when miners will be getting the shaft looking at the daily emission right how many coins in a dollarized amount are put out in the last 24 hours we see zill per the coins on here and again if you're missing but per this list zill is the 10th most profitable coin to mine in this list about a hundred thousand dollars of new zill coins mined per day and that is basically merge mined or dual mined with ethereum classic which is putting out about four hundred sixty eight thousand dollars worth of coins per day so this is a half million dollar daily ecosystem of mineable cryptocurrencies and the more efficient these miners get because there's a lot of overflow of old gpu miners that are always looking for a home but the writing was on the wall for many years that gpu mining was it has unfortunately been going down the path of just being basically good for spec mining not consistent mining returns the point though is that there's a lot of money to be had in this mining ecosystem and the more efficient these miners get uh, the more they will just be entirely dominated by ASIC miners for better and worse. Uh, and it's not really going to be most ASIC miners that are displaced by new powerhouses like the Bombax Miner EZ100. It's going to be the graphics cards that are limping along and barely profitable, unfortunately for them. Looking at the Bombax Miner EZ100 specs again, 12,500 mega hash a second, consuming 2,300 watts of power. Limited availability now. A more availability in the next quarter. The reported price from their site is 18, nearly 19 grand. However, you can get this miner even cheaper if you head over to Coin Mining Central. Please use our link in the video description below because it supports the channel. But more importantly, use the code BOSSCOIN to save some coin because they have the EZ100 listed at about 17 grand before any coupon codes are applied. They also have the EZ100C, which is a smaller quieter and even has the capability to be even more efficient than the ez100 the ez100 just has one mining mode it mines as it is the ez100c has an eco mode where it mines at a lower speed consumes less power but goes down to 0.13 joules a mega hash that is a significant increase that's about a 30 percent increase in efficiency over the EZ100, nothing short of impressive. This miner is poised to be one of the absolute go-to miners for home miners. Due to its more affordable price point, smaller size, it's gonna be probably like dead quiet, especially on the eco mode. It's even in the 3U chassis, so it can be deployed in classic server setups. And again, it's mining in a half million dollar daily ecosystem. Just so you understand, that means that this is the fourth biggest mining ecosystem in the world. There's Bitcoin, there's Dogecoin, merge mine with Litecoin, so that's just number two. Then there's Caspa, and then there's Ethereum Classic and Zill. I think it's unfortunate that Zill wants to move away from mining. When you're a part of such a big mining ecosystem and just the notoriety, the grassroots marketing in that, the the support and just a community you can build from the miners just to ditch that and leave that behind. Ah, I like it. If you don't know, Zill is 184th out of all cryptocurrencies and ranked by coin market cap and Ethereum Classic is up much higher at number 27 that commands a $4 billion market cap. Many people wonder, what does Ethereum Classic really do? What would you say 
you do here? Ethereum Classic is in essence Ethereum. It's actually true essence, the original unforked Ethereum. Uh, but the biggest takeaway is that I think Ethereum Classic is incredibly handicapped by their lack of marketing and branding. Dude, ditch the classic, give yourself some kind of cool trendy name and position yourself as the leading mineable platform blockchain. It, it's, it's, a, it's a shame. It would be so easy to make this project so much more interesting. Ethereum Classic, as it stands with its current branding and the way it lacks any real identity, makes it just like the ugly alternative to Ethereum. Even though I would much rather support ETC because it's mineable. This was an incredible opportunity to get this miner into review, so I appreciate Bombax for supporting us in that endeavor. We also have the EZ100C on order with them, so that will be really exciting to get in and review as well. I think that miner is actually more interesting to most people due to reasons already discussed, uh, but if you've got capital and you are here for density, the Bombax EZ100, the, the big boy, is going to be one of the most profitable miners on an established mining ecosystem that you can possibly get. Ethereum Classic recently reduced their rewards. They don't have any incoming reward reductions like Caspa does every single month. And Caspa effectively halves annually. It would not surprise me if Ethereum Classic has more mining reward emissions in a few years than Caspa does. Caspa will have to increase exponentially in price throughout the future years to be able to maintain the third mineable spot as far as daily emissions go. So that instills confidence in me in this device long term, especially based off its efficiency. It is number one, it is the winner and they boast that that's due to their proprietary research technology and design that only they have, that they've created, and their own manufacturing. This miner is so new you won't even see it on most mining profitability calculators yet, but at its current mining profitability, it would make it one of the top five most profitable mining rigs in the world right now. While this seems really expensive, compared to the other miners, it comes in at a pretty reasonable price point, especially for not only being comparable in mining profitability, but it is best in its own class. I'm not trying to come off shilly or whatever, this is exciting. And the machine so far has been nothing short of impressive. So I hope that you were impressed by this video and you subscribe and stick around on the Boss Queen YouTube channel where we're always trying to learn more to earn more. If no other reason, I'm just here to make more videos so we can post more 10 seconds of tales because we do that on every video. And uh, that's how we're going to close out this video because she's our CFO. It's time for me to pay her with a treat. Uh, that's going to be our chief frog officer. We were checking out a tree frog uh, this weekend, so that was fun. Uh, I, I love I love animals, so it's always fun. And, and Tails is always intrigued by them. You know, it's just uh, it's it's a it's a fun, stimulating experience, right? So, hope you have a good one. Hope to uh, see you on the next video as well.